Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. This lecture is part of the course of Advanced Mathematics for um, high school students and it's presented on unizor.com um, which contains not only the link to the lecture but also some notes that so I recommend you to watch it not s directly from YouTube but from this website. Um, by the way, the website contains lots of other things, functionality of uh, basically um, the whole educational process can be arranged through this website with enrollment, exams, etc. Okay, so this lecture is um, kind of a final theoretical lecture about symmetry in 3D space and um, not that I will not touch this issue again, most likely I will in some problems, um, but this lecture is a problem, actually it's also a problem, which encompasses all three types of symmetry in three-dimensional space. Symmetry relative to the plane, like a reflection, symmetry relative to the point, it's a central symmetry, and symmetry relative to axis, which can be arranged as a rotation of the space. So all these three types of symmetry um, uh, have combined into one problem, uh, not very difficult at all, but I'm going to present the problem and its solution, obviously, and um, I do recommend you just to, um, to go through this material as a, some kind of a um, final uh, touch on your understanding of symmetry. All right, so what's the problem? Um, let's assume we have a plane let's call it gamma we have one point on the plane we have one point outside of the plane Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to introduce a perpendicular to the plane at this point. Let's call it D. Next is, I'm making two different symmetrical transformation of point A. One is reflection relative to the plane which means I have to drop a perpendicular and the same distance should be point B the same distance from this point this is the point where let's call it Q where this perpendicular hits the plane gamma. At the same time, I would like to make a reflection of this point A relative to the point P. So it's a centrally symmetrical thing, which means I have to connect them and continue by the same distance, something like this, I guess. Let's call it C. And now, what I am going to prove is that the points B and C are symmetrical relative to the axis D. Now, I hope you understand that this is not um, the flat surface of this board, which B and C belong to, um, we are in the 3D. So it doesn't look like that they are symmetrical relative to this line D. Um, but that's only if you consider B and C belonging to the plane which is this board. In, in theory, they are slightly turned, as well as these two are slightly turned. So basically, this is the right angle. And what I'm going to do is to prove that three things I need to prove. 
uh, which basically constitute symmetry relative to the axis. Number one, that this segment BC actually intersects with D, um, that this is perpendicular, BC and D, and the third one, that they are on the same distance from intersection R. So that's what I would like to prove. So again, they intersect D and BC, they are perpendicular to each other, and B and C are in the same distance from the intersection point. Let me just write it down. BC is supposed to intersect with D. That's not empty set. Now, BC is supposed to be perpendicular to D and BR should be equal to RC where R is actually the intersection. BC intersect D. So that's what we have to prove. These three things. It's called A, B, and C. Three conditions. All right. So I was explaining for such a long time the conditions of this problem. The proof is not really very difficult, and not very, not, not, not very long. Okay, so let's just think about it this way. Um, AB is supposed to be perpendicular to gamma. And D is also perpendicular to, to gamma. That's how we have constructed in the first place. Which means they are parallel. So two lines perpendicular to the same plane are parallel to each other. Since they are parallel, these two lines belong to some plane, right? So let's call this plane delta. So AB belongs to delta and D belongs to delta. Parallel lines are always belong to some um, plane, which encompasses both of them. All right. Now, what does it mean? Well, since AB belongs to this plane delta, then both A and B belongs. Well, and incidentally Q as well, because Q is midpoint of the AB. Now, A belongs, and since D belongs, then this point B also belongs to this plane, obviously. And since A and P belong, then the whole line AC belongs. So what we have come up with is that AC is also belong to this point, uh, to this plane delta. So this belongs, this belongs, and this belongs. So everything belongs to this plane delta. So what I'm going to do right now is, no, number one, obviously uh, the D and BC are not really going um, passes each, pa uh, they're not passing each other without intersection because they all belong to the same plane, right? So D belongs to the same plane as BC. Since B belongs to the plane and C belongs to the same plane delta, so BC belongs to the plane delta. So from this and this, D belongs and BC belongs follows this, they must intersect. All right, that has been proven. Now let's just consider triangle A, B, C. Now Q is midpoint of the AB. P is midpoint of AC, right? Because this is the reflection relative to the plane gamma, and this is reflection relative to the point P. So. PQ is a midline of a triangle, and we all know the properties of midline of triangle. Well, not only it's equal to the half of the opposite side, but it's also parallel to the opposite side, right? So PQ is parallel to BC and equal to half of it. Now, we know that this D is parallel to AB. So what is actually PR? PR is also um, midline um, because P is the middle of this and PR is parallel to 
AB and if you have a triangle uh, and you have a line which intersects side at its middle and parallel to the base, in this case AB is the base, then this line is midline and it cuts in half the, uh, opposites, uh, the opposite uh, side of a triangle which is BC from which follows that BR is equal to RC that's this what's left is perpendicularity now it's also very simple now BC and PQ are parallel to each other now PQ is ob obviously perpendicular to AB because AB is perpendicular to the whole plane and that's why it's perpendicular to the PQ line which means BC is also perpendicular to AB because these are parallel this is the midline in ABC well and since BC is perpendicular to AB it's also perpendicular to D because D and AB are parallel that proves this one okay so all these three properties are proven which means that B and C are symmetrical relative to the axis. So here we have a composition of all three types of symmetry in this problem. That's why I liked it actually as a kind of a final theoretical uh, polishing on, on, on the symmetry in 3D. We have the reflection A and B, we have a central symmetry A and C, and we have an axis symmetry between B and C. Here is kind of interesting thing. All right, basically that's it. I do recommend you to go through notes for this lecture at unizor.com and uh, just go through um, the proof. I was trying to use as much symbolics as possible because mathematics is actually much better if you converse in, in symbolics. It's shorter and it's more understandable. So um, basically that's it for today. Thank you very much and uh, good luck.